and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Nestor. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy has decided to join us. It was actually her day off, and she decided, since Nestor isn't able to be here, which we'll, which we'll rebook another Gunplay episode. Uh, yeah. And everything, Kathy will be here with us. Uh, guys, check to make sure our audio is okay and everything, because uh, the Slobs did do an update, and uh, we want to make sure that everybody is doing just fine. It's a great update. Yeah, this update really messed up everything. It disallowed Skype, disallowed a lot of stuff, so we're going to try to figure out some other things. No more updating. Uh, we'll have to figure out some other stuff. Um... I do not know the Cinnamon Toast Crunch commercial, so you got me. Um, yeah, I don't know either. I don't see commercials. Wait, is, is it fun. another one of these commercials where animated little bits of cereal eat each other, and it's like cannibalism? Well, that's great. Mm, yeah, there is that one. Yep, that's uh, the one. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it is disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that one is kind of disturbing. Um, for everybody, this was supposed to be a gunplay episode. Uh, Nestor is not able to make it, so we're going to do it about... Uh, we're going to talk about the Indominus box set uh, miniatures I got. Uh, probably put together some Necrons. And uh, talk about the Warcaster stuff, because I got all my Warcasters, uh, Wave 1 and a few Wave 2 models. Uh, oh, thanks, so, we'll talk about that. We'll do another gunpla. Uh, everything, and we'll, we'll get back to it. It's not a big deal. Uh, things happen. It's life. Um, Kathy, what episode are we on? Uh, 132? I think so. I believe you are correct. I wasn't really paying attention today, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, which is kind of funny, but that's just how streaming is when you have guests and everything. Um, we want to thank all of our sponsors. We've had some stuff go on and a lot of the crazy things happening in everybody's life recently. We want to thank all of our sponsors. We want to thank Amuse on Mini for providing uh, a good place for us to store our stuff and bring it out to the masses. We want to thank Creature Caster for letting us be a uh, creature creator. Um, we should see some cool models coming from them pretty soon. Um, also, we want to thank uh, Metalhead Minis, uh, Lynn, which is amazing. She is now selling our stuff online. Uh, I do need to set that up as a uh, thing. Uh, we have our dice that are on there, our widgets, um, and also um, the Song of Ice and Fire tactical boards that myself and Captain Mizzy uh, designed for sale on there. Um, all the money from that stuff goes directly back to the podcast. We're trying to upgrade equipment. I'm still trying to upgrade a computer, uh, get a better stuff going on, a better sound system and everything. Um, and then who else do we need? Dan from Tectonic Craft Studios. Dan the man. I uh, want to thank him a lot. We have some stuff that we're going to be giving away from him shortly. Um, but we want to thank everybody that listens, watches, participates, anything. If you have something you want to see done, you want to have somebody on the show, you want to talk about someone, just send us a message. We will try our best to get everybody and anybody on this show to do things. Um, not next week, but the week after, we're going to have Jason Craze on here from uh, uh, Monument for his Pro Acryl line, and he is going to be uh, on here doing some cool stuff. I have a lot of questions for that man. Um, <laughs> and, of course, Kathy has got like 50 billion questions for him. Yeah, we'll have, there will uh, be no shortage of questions. Yeah. Unshockingly, John has none. <laughs> Uh, John will be taking that day off. Um, other than that, um, what do we have for um, drinks today? Kathy, I know you came in kind of last minute. What, what drinks do you have? I had the, the very last drops of uh, the gin that was in the bottle and uh, some tonic. Kathy needs to use all her pro acryls before all of them. I need to use all of my pro acryls within the next two weeks. That's not happening. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. John, what are you drinking today? Uh, well, I have a uh, Fireball and Dr. Pepper. Because I'm done with the mule. You're done with the mule? Um, I'm going with some good old-fashioned Maker's Mark uh, tonight. Um, Delightful. Yes. Love it. Um, so before that, we do have some um, shout-outs. 
Um, as you may know, uh, Regis Philbin passed away. Uh, yeah. He was a talk show host. Um, had a very popular morning talk show host and everything. Um, I don't know what he was like as a guy or, you know, whatever. But, I mean, he was pretty, pretty popular. Uh, he passed away. He was 88. Um, who you know else? who died today? Olivia de Havilland. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wasn't she like 104 or something? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's old. I mean, that's a long life. That's a very long life. Yeah. And then uh, yesterday, John Saxon died. John Saxon is... Actor. He's done a lot of... Oh, yeah. He was in three of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. He was in uh, Enter the Dragon, Battle Beyond the Stars. He's yep. in a ton of stuff. Yep. The second mule, Banyan is is. All is right. on his second mule. He's, he's, he's gonna bring one up to you. Such a good friend to bring a second mule up to you, John. Definitely, I'm fine. Um. I'm not a fan of the Moscow mule. I don't know what it is. It's not a Moscow. It's more of a Virginia mule. It uses whiskey instead of vodka. Uh, there was I someone. I, I would try that. Or Irish meal, he said. I, Irish meal. Virginia meal is much the same thing. It just it's bourbon you. instead? Bourbon whiskey? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> Peter Green. Instead of a... Uh, is who yeah. he's talking about. Fleetwood Mac uh, co-founder. Oh. Uh, passed away. He was 73. Um, guys, please take care of each other. Look after everybody. Make sure that you're... If you see something going on, help out any way you can. If you can't, make sure to report it. Um... Take care of yourself. Wear your mask. If you got to go out, try to distance. Uh, we want you to come back and enjoy more amazing professional podcasting that we do. Um, <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> um, but we do. We want you all to stay safe out there. Uh, from all of us to everyone there, be safe. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Damn, that's good. I haven't had a Makers in a while. Hold on. Do you have to just take a moment to savor it? Yeah, well, it's going to work in a straight face more. <sighs> I, that's I, that's I, how I, I have to do when I... I'm sorry, John. All right. I was going to say that's what I have to do when I'm drinking scotch or whiskey. I have to savor it. I have to take oh. a moment. Oh, absolutely. <sighs> I haven't had a Makers in a while. Dang, that was good. I'm not done yet, but damn, that was good. All right, so let's go. Have on stream, I know that. Oh, yeah, on stream I haven't had any while. It's been mostly beer. Ooh. Hold on, a little bit of water. Ah. Let's switch over to the paint cam. Let me turn on the lights. I'm sure that's not messed up. No, I think I was working on that during the stream. <clears throat> All right, so, um. This week was actually this like week was a big week for me for miniatures. I got, um, I'll show this. This was the miniature that I got in uh, that we were supposed to do today. Um, it is the Iron Blood Orphans uh, Gundam Vitter. And this was the this was the cool sticker. I think I showed that last week. I want to ask an important question. And all this other stuff. Yes. Why does the Gundam look like it has a rapier? Uh, because it does. So, yeah. Not to throw logic into your giant robot fighting thing, but <laughs> logic. would probably be the worst goddamn weapon against another Gundam. I, I have no well, clue. He also was wielding a rapier. No, no, no. Even if he, 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 the the pointy end doesn't that doesn't really work against giant metal things as much. What if they're fighting Godzilla? I what mean, if they're fighting you, pirates? Godzilla with a rapier, because I know how that's going to end. Hashtag Atomic Breath FTW. What 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 if they're that's what if he's a yeah. he's a Gundam pirate? Yar, do they have a peg leg too? <laughs> oh, peg leg Gundam! Oh, can I? <laughs> <laughs> and then his his other arm is a hook. So we'll do that one again. So uh, so wait wait we'll make make a uh, we'll make we'll make a uh, thing. I see Necrons a conversion in my future. Necrons or Warcaster wait, first. Wait, Gunpla. Oh God, that's. What do we want to talk about first? Necrons or Warcaster? Uh, Peg Leg Gunpla. 
Peg leg gun plot? Okay. <laughs> we'll get right okay. on that. Kathy's gun plot conversion. <laughs> Kathy you gotta make a gun that, that it can use with the hook hand, too. Is it has to be one of those uh, uh, muzzle loading. No, flat. What do they call them? Matchlock pistols? <laughs> Flintlock? <laughs> A, a match you, you take a steam rifle, look like a foot like this. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. All right, so let's just go ahead and go. We'll, we'll go with the Indominus stuff first because, uh, <laughs> ooh, tasty. Um, so this week, of course, Indominus came out for everybody that bought it or able to buy it. And I was able to get a copy of the book. And this book, I really like the cover of this. The cover of me. Hold on. It looks like the guy with the ha iron halo and then the other guy in flames. and. It's know. like Sanguinius versus Horus. Yeah. It's like bad guys versus good guys there. All of, except for we know, we all know there are no good guys in this scenario. No matter how halo-y the one guy looks. And then the back. I mean, that's true. In the grim darkness <laughs> of the far future, there is only war. No good guys. So, I mean... Space wolves. They're the closest to good guys. That really. would be yeah. space wolves. Well, I mean, they're puppies, so... Well, no, it's because they're the ones who get upset when, you know, the Imperium does some egregious shit. They're like, that's not right. Uh, and they're again, puppies. You, know, you use a little bit of psychic powers without the Emperor's permission, and they're more than happy to lay waste to your fucking planet. <laughs> they like scratches behind the ears, too. I scratches. Scratches the space wolves. Scratches, scratches behind the ears. I love that. Uh-huh. Um... So, inside cover, wall of faces, screaming. Um, I'm inclined to agree. Chaos are the good guys. Oh, definitely not, but... They're the bad, bad guys. I I was going to make a political joke, but I'm going to skip the political joke, and let's just continue with the 40K. <laughs> um, Moving right along. So, I mean, for most of the book, I mean, it, there's, of course, tons of fluff and pictures, like it, any old... I'll be honest. It is what we expect from a game's work. Oh, yeah. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, gorgeous models, everything. It's like a really thick white dwarf right now. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's all looks yeah, really good. It kind of looks flipping like a through. very good quality GW book, guys. Yeah. Please. Uh-huh. Nothing, nothing super, you know, what, what you expect. Uh, and then you can go all the way. And it's all, is it all glossy cover through the whole thing? Yeah, oh. glossy all through the whole thing. Surprising, they've actually gone away from that. Most of them, it's like color through most of it, and then black and white through parts. So yeah, so I mean, off. the rules start on page one ninety two. <laughs> so one hundred and ninety one pages of nothing, fluff, I should say, not nothing. Um, and then you've got um, the rules. The rules you can see about the section about there. So it's like one ninety two to two sixty six are the rules. Um, and um, it, there's a lot of, you know, holy within, within dice, stuff that you're used to, that you're not, you know, that you, you're pretty common with. So, I mean, it's not like you're, but they have to say it or correct or go be that guy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it's anything. I haven't had a chance to read all the rules yet. Um, been busy with other stuff, but I mean, talks about each little phase. Oh, that sounds like slacking to me. I have been slacking. Uh, and then, of course, then they have all the missions. And then they talk about the this guy's... flag. That's, that's actually the point. <laughs> but okay. Um, I just, White and red. You just happen to, you know, pass by that. I'm talking about red. different things and then different armies and the stratagems. The attachments. Yeah. Attachments and, like, terrain features. Um, which I think this is a very cool, whoever did this artwork or whoever did the painting on this, I think was really, really cool. It yeah, looks really good. Uh, no. At least the terrain features do shit now. Yep. Um, the terrain good, features. They should. Terrain uh, traits. Whether people use it and people do it is a different story. I think they should. There should be like, you know, this, 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 and this. Um, different sets out. They talk about the open play, match play, um, different missions. Um... Pretty much everything is set up for the new size board, uh, which is what the 38 or whatever it is. Um, they want people playing at that um, instead of the old four foot by six foot. 
Um, so tons and tons of missions, which is good. Uh, good narrative play talking into it, uh, which I think I think 40k could deal with a lot more good narrative play. Now you're not going to see much of it in like conventions and tournaments, but definitely like store things. Well, yeah, I mean, narrative play has always been uh, what you and your friends choose to do. It's You're not going to get the random guy you're playing on a Thursday night in the store to do narrative play because it's not. Yeah. They don't know if they're both going to be there at the same time to play again next week. Yeah. That's why they have a campaign. You just need to make, uh, you need to make the right rules for that. Yeah. Um, Crusade play. Legionnaires is asking, so mm-hmm. I was unclear on the Warhammer community article Will Death Watch be a supplement or have its own codex? I believe it'll have its own codex, but they're not replacing any of the codices right now. They'll they'll replace them at the normal rate. They're not going to be like you're all illegal. Here's your little book to get you by. They're going to keep the old ones uh, working for now. Um, there are different uh, new rules, like the blast weapons. Like all these are all the weapons that have the blast rule on it now. I like I like what they did with the blast weapons. It's very cool because you basically it's still getting rid of templates, but makes it more important. Uh, makes it do more damage if you have more people. Yeah. Um, things that curves aircraft, rare rules, benefit from cover, improving benefits of cover, um, just different things. Uh, glossary of terms, which I think is really really good um, to have. Yes. Um, and then of course more cool artwork type thing. I mean, overall, the book is really good and solid. I mean, I mean, it's huge. I mean, how many pages is it? 875,000? Um, let's see, what was the last number? 366, 67, 68, 71, 72, about 373 pages. So, I mean, it's, it's a good hefty book. It's very pretty. I like that they did a you know, an art like this instead of like black and Warhammer 40k, you know, type thing. I like yes. this. This well, is really... It, it's fun to look at. Remember, ostensibly, this is not the starter set. Correct. Even but, though every time GW is comparing it, they're comparing it to other starter sets. So, yeah. grain of salt. <laughs> I like it Just that saying. they have this set. That they have that on there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, let's go to Miles. I cannot comment on the Space Wolves. Uh, I can get the book out and kind of show you what the... Because I do have the instruction booklet on there. Space Wolves. Yeah, why not? Well, you can page through the uh, instruction booklet, and there's or probably a picture wolves. on the front of it. Or not Space Wolves, it's uh, Primaris. Uh, yeah. Space Marines. Space Marines, more Space Marines. Uh, it, does, it does come with a um, the Edge of Silence rules, so if you want to play the Edge of Silence stuff um, and everything. I like that. They used to have, I, remember, I don't know if you, well, you probably don't remember, neither of you, but they used to have box sets that would have a little bit of terrain and then have like a rule supplement of here's sort of the campaign for this particular thing, which I thought was a really cool idea. Just hard because they're always civic armies, like, you know, orcs versus dark angels or what have you. Yeah. Um, rules on the new Necrons and what they do, which there was some pretty cool little stuff on them. Uh, I was liking it. I'm kind of happy with it. Uh, I like the Scarab Swarms and everything. But just a little supplement. It gives you the rules because the new Necron book doesn't come out until October. So we don't know all the cool Necron stuff. Uh, but that gives does give what's in this box set. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, reanimator, I really like this model. This model is really cool looking. That's the long-legged one. Show us. Show us the picture. Um, it wasn't on camera. It wasn't? Oh, okay. Well, this <laughs> is the model right there. It's kind of going to be hard to see, but it's the long-legged one in the thing. Oh, yeah, that won't be in focus. Yeah, it won't be in focus. I'll have to go and... I'll, I'll show the models in a second. Um, so, let's go through some of these. We'll go through what were some of the sprues. This is the sprue that has the... The guys with the big old scythes. Um... Hold on a second. Oh, here, we'll go through the instruction booklet. Da, 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 da. Instruction booklet. Uh, and I like to have a little graph down here to the yes. base yes. sizes. It was, yes. So I'm posting oh, that good. on Twitter, and I was like, that is a great, great idea. Yeah, I thought that was really, really. 
I kick a cable, something happened? I don't know. Okay. Um, I did not get the stickers, which I don't care for. Um, the person that bought it, like, you got Space Marines, I don't care for the stickers. Oh, you mean uh, the decals? Decals? The decals? Yeah, the decals. The decals. Um, and so there was, uh, of course, the Marine stuff, which um, I don't care about, so screw the Marines. Um, but the Necron stuff I do care about. Uh, first one, this is the Overlord. Um, I like this model. This model is really cool looking. Uh, they do do very limited posing on all this stuff like they do normally. I said do do. I said do do. Do 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 do. And then the Royal Warden. Um, no posability, pretty much, because everything's kind of. You could practically yeah, almost. Yeah, it was it's standard. Um, hey, he's got it going. Um, and then the plasma, pla plasmancer. Uh, pretty simple and easy. This is one of my really, uh, the Lord. I really like this model a lot because he's really big. Uh, but, John, they did do tactical rocks in this one. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of Dynafire. So there is tactical rocks. Uh, it's, it's easier with something like that where you're like to just have bases with actual, you know, sand and flock on it. Yeah. Because it's a full warfare thing. It's certain games. Where it would not be appropriate for you fighting out in an open field or a field with rocks, i.e., Infinity or freaking uh, Marvel. Uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, the Destroyers, which I think they're a really cool model. I like these guys, these big old hand weapons that they have. Um, I really like them, they're pretty neat. Um, and then there's this model, which is the. There's a Crypto Thralls, which are smaller. Uh, single guys, and then they have the reanimator. This is the one that I think is really, really cool. Is this one right here? Okay. The War of the World Walker type thing that we keep on talking yeah. about. And then, of course, the regular Necron Warriors. Um, tons the of those. The only model to truly benefit from no posability because that way you know they go together pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, little paints and stuff. Oh, yeah, and then they swarms. Um, which I like. I remember the original swarms, which were um, little bitty metal beetles that oh, you attached yeah, to vehicles. Um, back when they were just a white dwarf supplement thing, they weren't an actual army. Um, the paint scheme they did for these guys are kind of neat. They're kind of a brassy, rusty look. Um, I won't be doing that. That's cool. That's all. But it looks cool. It's shade. It's it's. It's a good take on the cliche look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the, these are the destroyers, uh, and then everything's pretty good. Uh, of course, nothing to bitch about on GW model. I mean, they're, I don't see, I didn't see any glaring like big issues. Um, so I've got three packs of these guys. Um, so I'm looking forward to putting these guys together, and then. Uh, three of the lords. Um, Are they leaping? Do what? Are no, they they're leaping? not three. No, they're not leaping. They're standing there, looking imposing. Um, I that. Do you like it that everything's now pegged? Um, it, it, I do and don't like it. I do like it because it makes it really easy to put together. But for posability, you you know you're not gonna get poop out of that. To be okay. fair. Those of us who are going to pose and pose things, that's not going to stop us. Correct. You're going to oh, melt true. it up yeah. or, yeah, heat it up or whatever. Um, so I thought these guys were really cool. Um, I liked, I really like the new Necron stuff. I didn't even care about the rules. I just liked the way they looked. Um, and then the other one, the heavy weapon. Um, looks really, really cool. Is that like the... Double gauze thing. Um, and then, of course, this is the reanimator with all the big legs. I'll show it two separates. Um, I like these. I mean, this little stuff right here, these big giant legs are really cool in my opinion. I just think they're pretty neat. Um, don't care. And then the other half of it. They're just really, really cool. Uh, I'm going to try to get all of this put together this week. 
with all the stuff I need to binge watch. And then, of course, all the Warriors. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six brews of Warriors. Give me one second. I wanted to show something on these bases. Um, but it's six brews of war, you know, plus the Scarab Swarms. So, I mean, there's quite a bit. I mean, it's going to it's gonna be a while. It's going to be a while. Um, options now, too. Yeah, there's some options on them uh, because you can have certain things. Uh, so, one of the things they did do different on the bases this time is you've got your regular GW bases, but they put peg holes. I can't see it. Yeah, they've done that for years. They did it with... Uh, do they already oh, yeah. have them done? Right. I've, had, I've had plenty of even metal stuff with pegs. All my Yetis. See, I never... Uh, I mean, I, yeah. all my towel stuff, nothing had peg holes. <laughs> all of it had... It was... It was all you had to pull... Yeah. Easy to assemble stuff has peg holes in it. Does it? Okay. This is something I just thought was new. Um, this is new to me. I've not, I've not seen the peg holes um, in the bases already. And then this is the new bike base. The guy just gave me all the bases in one box set. And he gave me all the bases so he didn't need them uh, that I bought my set from. So, and that was that. So I've got tons of stuff to put together. Ah. Heads up, going down. Overall, book-wise, instructions, all that, fine. Model-wise, fine. So, the other thing that came in this week, excuse me as I'm leaning over, is I was really excited about this coming in. I... Really, really looking forward to playing this. Luckily, I'll have someone to play with because they're getting their stuff in next week, too. Um, but I have got to put and clean it all up. So this is the starter box, officially. Um, this is, of course, Iron Star Alliance. They're the good guys. Yes, they're the good guys. I doubt it. <laughs> the who now? Iron Alliance? Iron Star Alliance. They're the cops of the galaxy. They uh, rule with an iron fist. Iron Star Alliance, Cops of the Galaxy. Yeah. Wait, what game are we talking about? Warcaster, or Privateer Press' oh, uh, sci-fi okay. game. okay, I just like... Kind of like... I was up. reading the chat and I got distracted. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I chose Iron Star Alliance just because I like the models. I thought they were kind of neat looking. Um, box. This box uh, kind of thick. And everything, but overall, it's pretty decent. Um, got some good rules on it. Uh, just basic stuff that you would expect from Private Press. Um, I did find it funny. Uh, let's see if this one has that one. Yeah, I don't know if you. We'll see if we can get it. So good. Read. Uh, hold on. May contain resin. Hold on. No, is oh come on, focus. Not resin. May. There you go. It, read read that out loud. Choking hazard, small no. parts, not for Make children it. under three years, intended for ages fourteen and up. Keep going. What they always use from and standing is hazardous. hazardous. Yeah. Always wear yeah. an, an. Wait, were we just reading at the same time? Yeah, do oh, start at the may contain resin. <laughs> go ahead, Kathy. No, no, Gonzo, I think you should be reading that. I think we're pretty pretty aware of that. May contain resin. Resin dust from sanding is hazardous. Always wear an N95 respirator and use a wet standing technique when sanding resin. Uh -oh. Thoroughly clean your work area after working on this product. Did, did, did they mean wet sanding? Yes. <laughs> One job. I mean, the wet standing technique is when I'm in a swimming pool while I'm doing my hobby. Yeah, that was just, somebody caught it and they were like, oh, okay. All right, so pull this out. Wow, uh, put those Kickstarter dollars to good use. Yeah. Uh, basic rule book. Um, pretty quick and standard. Uh, it's got a little bit of fluff at the beginning of it. Uh, and then the rules. The rules are free online, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so no big deal. Um <laughs> 
importantly, how much is the app going to cost? And is it going to be as great as the 40K one? Ooh. I don't even know if they're planning on doing it because it's pretty easy to figure this out. Uh, standard dice you get. Uh, the one th complaint people have been saying is they need more of these dice, um, which I'm sure you can go and buy in another set anywhere. No big deal. Um, comes with a little bitty cards. That Nick Scotty Potty says, how much does a starter box forecaster cost? Actually, I don't know how much it's going to cost, honestly, because uh, I did it as a Kickstarter. Yeah, it's Kickstarter, Cousin Scotty, but you're not going to find it in the store for purchase. Not yet. Ever? Uh, no, not yet. It's, uh, I think, next <laughs> month. Because every, every game that Kickstarter is too much, and I don't know if they did too much, ends up in a poor place. Um, so you get these little cards. That's, uh, uh, these cards are important for what I'm going to show you later, though. Um, right. Then you've got your cards for the game. I'll move this other way for, for, for a bit. And, you know, war jacks have the ability to have things change on them. So you can do different upgrades. So here's your basic war jack with the stats on it. <clears> the <throat> size of the base, how much it costs to bring out, different things, and then the rules on the back. All right. Now, when you buy your jack, you buy parts to it. You can have different... Shields, cannons, bayonets, different things. And certain things are hard pointed. So, like this null cannon, uh, and I think it's a harbinger cannon, are shoulder mounted. So, you can't have both of those. Which you know. makes sense. Okay. Then you have. Cannon. Your, yeah. Cannon, cannons. Yeah. Then you have your repulsor shields, cannon. which cannons. are hard pointed to the arm. So, you can only have two arms. Unless the thing has the ability to have more than two arms. So, like, you can have a fusion glaive and a repulsor shield. Or assault rifle, bayonet, fusion glaive, or two shields, so on and so can forth. Can have a giant cannon and two shields? Yes, you can have a giant cannon and two shields. That's okay. Yeah. That yeah, I really like that one. Um, then you got your basic, you got a paladin weaver. Uh, and, of course, they all have something on the, they all have their rules on the back of their card. Um, enforcer. Commander, commander. Because um, I got the uh, alternate pose commander. Putting out full cards for a game when they uh, took away cards for their other game. People have asked about that because they were wondering if they were going to do an app. And right now, I think they're not. But I mean, this game, it's easy to build armies. Because there's no different things. There's no... I just find it funny that after yeah. you know, a very unpopular decision of getting rid of cards completely for War Machine of Hordes, they put cards in Warcaster, which is good. Yeah. It means they're listening to people, but it is kind of funny. Um, they give you a quick turn play-by card on how the game is played. They're all glossy. These are these are glossy. Uh, you know, do this, do this, do this. Uh, they right. give you some little cool art cards. Cirrus, you know, just different things. Like little trading cards. I think it was part of the Kickstarter. One of the rewards was part of it. Um, I don't know why, but okay. Um, That's a Kickstarter reward. That's a little lame. I, I think it, I think it was like like the first thing or whatever. It wasn't even anything if big. If it's like, a, hey, you Kickstarted, you get those, it's fine. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It wasn't anything big. Like, you know, you have to get to a certain level to get those. You'd be like, what? Hmm. Uh, and then you have your cards that you use during gameplay. Um, and you have to build a deck from these. A certain amount. Um, no big deal. Um, these came actually cellophane wrapped, but I decided to take them out of it and look at them. Um, where is the warp gate? Oh, boys. Sorry, it, they decided to do new packaging. Instead of hard clamshell package, they package them in these little things. They actually were stapled shut, but of course I've looked through everything. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't find my... I still have the Kickstarter on it, but... Yeah. Um, okay, so these are the warp gates they give you. And these are only, you know, these were Kickstarter type They're exclusive. So tiny. Yes. They are very tiny compared to the ones that I printed for you. Look at that. Look at this compared to this. 
Now, of course, this is resin and so much easier. Um, and they all have to fit on a 30 millimeter base, which mine do. Um, and they don't care because the Kickstarters get these metal ones. Anybody else that uh, does it, they get a token. A token. And this is the. Sorry, it was all like wedged in the bottom. Token set. So the package looks like a, it would have had cheese in it that came from a gas station corner counter. Yeah. Fair. Oh, actually, I like it. It's a 3D token, at least. You know, hats off. Yeah. The base, and then you plug it into yeah. it. Yeah, there's the base, and the, these are the warp gates. Uh, and these are different things that happen, you know, whatever, with the game. Um, but everything comes in these little packets. This is the basic troop. Um, all metal. That's the kind of big my crab rangoons come in. <laughs> oh man, I would love some crab rangoons right now. I know, right? Um, so I, I've glanced over these and checked them out. Surprise, they're metal. They are going all metal. I didn't find any resin in this at all. What the hell is going on? Um, everything fits together pretty easy looking. There hasn't been, you know, I haven't found anything that's like, oh my God, this is not going to work. Um, I did like quick dry fit on certain things um, just to check it out. Um, but everything fits. Everything's got a good pose. Uh, not a lot of flash compared to, you know, whatever, but they're, they're pretty clean. Um, the basic troops are one or two to three pieces. Like I said, this one guy is an extra leg. I thought they would be bigger. I thought they were going to be bigger. So let's see. Here is basic troop compared to, now let's put it like foot to foot. So they're about the same size as like a Marvel. A little bit bulkier type thing. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, mean, Mar Mar well, it's not quite because that's you've got uh, Shuri, who's a small person. Yeah. There. So let's go with Drax. How about that? Drax is a big guy, so that's good. So do I. Well, it'll give us a good comparison, a good range. Yeah. So I mean, here is the Marcher World one. Wait. So are they just like twenty-eight millimeter? They're they're twenty-eight. Yeah. Because yeah. Marvel's slightly bigger than twenty-eight. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, they're... Oh, sorry. Without a screen. Excuse me. Good lord. So, but they're about the same, just different. I, I'm not sure if these guys are sculpted to be thinner or whatever. Um, but they came... The basic troop is fine. I'm sorry about the noise, guys. These plastic bags. Uh, they were doing this for the simple reason of getting away from hard plastic. Clamshell stuff. Okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um... Let me go with the Warjack. It's interesting to pick up something and then put it down because this stuff is super heavy now. So this is the Firebrand Warjack that comes with um, the box set. Oh, hey, everybody. Sock Jacket is back in the menu. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing whenever <laughs> I picked it up. So, I, I mean... Might I might be in now. It changes the whole dynamic if I can Sock Jack a motherfucker. <laughs> um... I can't wait till my boss asks me about what a what sock jacking is. <laughs> so you get the basic. they have got these three little wings that go on the back. Two legs. Uh, I'll be honest. I really, of all the models they make, they're they're troops I can give or take, but they're their war jacks still look pretty cool. Um, all the different weapons. Oh, spammer in the chat. Oh, do you want to take care of that one? I shall do that. <laughs> uh. Want to become famous? Um, so the different weapons, um, they are easily magnetized. You just have to buy the right magnet for it, the right size. Um, I'm gonna have to buy some smaller magnets because uh, I will magnetize the warjacks, of course. Because I'm unless I can able to get. Now I've got three fire brands, and I may build one out as um, double shield, cannon one, you know, sword and shield one. You know, whatever. But it just all depends. I'm not sure if I want to or not. Um, but it's uh, there's a hole drilled out already. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to see. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, they mentioned they were going to do that. They were going to draw up the hole already for magnets because they understand the reality. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, there's already one there. So, I mean, it yeah. would be a little bit easy to get some of this stuff because this flips over and you can see where they start, you know, the, the peg is supposed to go. So, I mean, it can fit normally, no problem. But. <laughs> so, you can tell Banyan's a veteran because he reported him too. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Um, but the jacks look really cool. I'm definitely going to have to, uh, definitely, definitely going to be washing these models because I can feel the releasing agent all through it. Um, oh yeah, you you washing yeah. all your metal models to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I mean you. I mean and the thing is, is you can feel it. You're just like ooh. So this is all going to get a good. All of these models are going to get a deep, uh, dawn you know, bath uh, type thing. But I mean everything looked to fit pretty decent. Um, I don't know what all I'm going to pin type thing. Cause I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm going to look and see what's going on with it. Um, but so far everything seemed to be just fine. Everything's kind of pegged as in it's got an oval peg, not just a round peg on certain things. Um, to make it easier for you to like set it up and get, you know, feet placement and stuff correctly. Well, luckily, if, if it balances well enough, I usually build legs up. If you get the legs to balance well, you can put it all together and then put it on the base. Yeah. Make sure it's all, you know, set up right how you want. Yeah. Unless you want to make some tactical rocks for, for his ass. I mean, for the most part... <laughs> actually, no, no offense, Perfect Press actually doesn't have models of tactical rocks in this, it looks like, so... <laughs> well, Sideways zinger at GW from across the room. I don't know. But been the one thing that I'm probably not going to um, magnetize is the heads. Um, for the most part, the kind of community has said, I uh, don't want care. I don't care what m model of the head you have on there. Uh, Why would, what's the difference with the head? Does one head have like a weaponized? Well, what happens is when you build your... Let me bring this out because this is actually one of the things I really like because whenever you build your Warjack, you pre-build, your, of course, your list and like the Cortex options. I don't know. Cortex, you have a Jack Hunter and a Neural Web. And then you have a Recon and Reflex. So you have all these different... Um, Different things, depending on the recon reflex, depends on which head you have on, depends on what abilities it gets. Um, and so most of the community has said, I don't care what head you put on there, as long as whenever you write your list, you write which head you have on there. You don't change the head up in the middle of the game That's or so whatever. Weird. Yeah, well, it's to give more options to play and everything. Um, but. I would totally magnetize it because I would. They're really, really, really tiny. That's my only problem. I would be afraid that I would lose them. Hashtag tiny magnets and plastic bags. Yeah. You need plastic bags? I also, play Star Wars Legion. I got plastic. Rare Earth magnets are really strong. So if you have something metal and you just throw the heads into it, they'll stick to it. Um, let's see. Well, if you're going to magnetize, you might also start magnetize the bases so you can just do the whole metal toolbox carrying case. Yeah, and... And if you if you magnetize the base right, you could just stick the head between his legs, and it'll stick there when you're in storage. Um, this is the Weaver, which is lets you cast spells across the battlefield further. Oh, I love K and J Magnetics Legionnaires. K and J. K J Magnetic. Yeah. Um, very cool looking model. I really like this model. This model has some really cool look to it. I like the helmet and such. Um. It has a little bit of opposability by, you know, rotating the arms or whatever, but not much. Um, and then, again, I apologize for the wrapping and unwrapping of this stuff. That's what it is. I apologize again. I apologize seven times. Forget it. Okay. Let's try to have a sponsorship from Ziploc. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Fantasy play games does, good lord. Yeah. Not only did I use work for Games Workshop, get a lot of stuff in bits, so I got plastic bags, but I got a whole I, drawer behind I me have, of plastic bags. I have a drawer too, full of the little Ziploc. They come in handy too. They yeah, sometimes come in you handy. need to put something in there, or you need, like, I need to put this somewhere, or I need just something to 
lay my brush on when it's kind of wet. Ziploc bag, boom, go. That's Bob Drunkle. Um, this is the commander with the alternate sculpt. Um, so the backpacks are the same, but the way the arms are are a little bit different. Um, this was uh, the alternate sculpt was a part of the Kickstarter uh, mm. type thing. Um, so you get that, and that's the starter set. Um, I don't know how much it's going to be. Um, some people have already started getting their stuff for retail release, or they're getting their personal and they're putting it in the shop right away. I don't know. I think they had, didn't they have levels for retailers? They did have a, a retail level. Um, so that was the box. And then, of course, I bought into one of the larger ones, uh, larger Kickstarters, because I wanted everything not gone, though. Uh, so I got quite a bit of the other models. Uh, I actually got some Wave 2 models in Wave 1. Because um, I guess they had them done early enough. So I'm not going to... Of course, I have three Warjacks. So I don't have to worry. They're all the same Warjack. Uh, that's... And I got, like, doubles of everything. So... Uh, oh. Russ has a question. Okay. Do you like metal minis? Or would it be better if they were plastic slash resin? <sighs> You know, I, I'm kind of iffy on that because I like metal because they're going to sturdy and they're not going to break, but dropping them is a pain in the butt. Because then they fall apart. Correct. But so, the plastic, they... If it was their rustic, then yeah, the rustic is shit. Yes. That's, the, yeah. that. the worst material, almost the worst material model we made out of. Okay. Um, metal over that any day of the week. So this is their packaging that they're going to have for individual models and groups or whatever. So if you're going to buy another unit of whatever, this is what you're going to get. Uh, squads, you name it. Um, I don't need that. I bought four units. I have four. I have a bunch of units. Today. So this is called a Paladin Aegis. It is a weapon attachment uh, type thing. So standard type packaging, cardboard, blah, blah, blah. And it also has the standing technique when you do wet, wet standing technique. Uh, misprint. Uh, open it up. <laughs> and you pull out another smaller box. Now this is the card I was telling you about. This tells you what it is, but it slides in the front like this. I don't know why they did this. I, uh, okay. Well, that on extra printing for a model or something. So you have the card already. Why not yeah. get some use out of it? So... But that's not the card for the model. No? No. Here is the card for the model in here. That's definitely odd, then. Why wouldn't you double use out of it? Yeah. So, but, uh... I'm sure the card has a barcode on it now. Who cares? It'd be okay. Yeah. Um, and, of course, it comes in the standard wrapping type thing. Uh, everything is uh, stapled shut, so you don't have to worry about it falling out or whatever. <clears throat> um, like this... my egg rolls. They go in the same bag, too. Yeah. I want egg rolls. I know, right? <laughs> I ate right before we started. Uh, but this is uh, the weapon attachment. Um, egg rolls and crab ragoons. Uh -huh. See, I'm not a crab, rag uh, crab ragoon person. Yeah, mm. well, you don't know what's good for you. Well, they're not good for me either, so... <laughs> I don't care. Healthier than the lunch I had. My, than my original lunch, it was healthier than my lunch. I love your lunch. I did actually go down and actually eat some real food afterwards, but <laughs> the circus peanuts didn't last you long circus enough. Circus peanuts lunch was, was not going well. Delicious though, and nutritious. Not nutritious at all now. No. Oh, Captain Misty, man, I am definitely a little jealous. <gasps> Captain Mizzy had egg rolls and crab rangoon today. Oh. And then the Paladin Annihilators, which is the heavy weapon crew. Same thing. Simple package, box, little card. It's weird because the cards are the same size, too. Yeah. Maybe they were worried that if you put these on the front, people would steal them or people would, you know destroy them or whatever because there's no plastic in this at all it's all cardboard seems like they're really kind of striving for recyclable type thing yeah they did say they were trying to make eco -friendly more eco-friendly packaging yeah. Yeah. which is cool 
Absolutely cool. Yeah. Um, Paladins. Three different poses. Three different weapons. Backpacks. All, all the same weapon, just different poses in the backpacks. Um, so, I mean, it, it's... The models are good. I don't see Daddy, a lot of you flash. you hear what you want to hear. What did you hear? You really do have to enunciate. Circus. Peanuts. Circus. <laughs> peanuts. Not circus penis. That's just what I think every time, too, though, because I'm 12. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I got, like... Two of everything, three fire brands, three basic troop lines, um, one box set of the starter. I mean, so I have like two and three of everything in there. So there was quite a bit. Um, hold on a second. <clears throat> so I'll be definitely <clears throat> washing all of that stuff before I even touch it at all because there's definitely i mean you can feel they're all slick and smooth and so on and so forth so they're all going to get a big dawn you know dish soap bath and scrub down a bit because there's definitely a lot of releasing agent which is understandable that's what they do i mean that's what you have to do and what time is it by the way damn it's almost i can't I won't even have a chance to put together a model no, you're yeah, but you got to up. show us all about what was in them. You could just keep going with that and, you know, build things later. Correct. I could do the building of um, some Necrons next week. No, yeah. I'm going to build those next week. <laughs> I'm certain you will have models still left to build next week. Is that a challenge? No. <laughs> Daddy's super glad to get a good look at the Warcraft. Warcaster stuff, though. Uh, though I, one thing I would say, the packaging, they're trying to be eco-friendly. I get that. No problem. Uh, is it weird to kind of have that? Yeah. Uh, is it a problem? No. Um, everything is still packed nice and neat. I mean, they're all made of metal, so you're not going to be breaking anything. Um, I do know that the Marcher Worlds and Iron Star Alliance stuff has been shipped out, or shipping. People are just starting to get the rest of their stuff. Um... I know that the other one, um, I can't remember their full name, but they're kind of the, they're actually really cool looking. Uh, Mizzy's getting that one. She's supposed to get hers Tuesday. So they're shipping really well. Uh, there was minor problem. Um, <clears throat> if you ordered the extra weapon pack um, for the models, the weapon pack B, which is more weapons and uh, cortexes. For your jack, those did not get shipped, and they're shipping those out next time in the next wave, um, which should be pretty soon too. Um, so all three factions will be out, and people will be able to use them and play with them. Um, there's already people doing testing games and doing out and trying to figure out, try to find some of the things and get um, get some of the bugs out of it. I guess you know, hey, why is this this? Why didn't they do this? I was saying it right. We know the people who are playing it are a lot of War Machine players. They're Correct. trying to break shit. Well, trying so, to break the game, so trying to, to find the loopholes. Now, there are, <laughs> no, the one I'm talking about, um, I don't know if anybody remembers Zeke. Uh, he's one of the guys from Minority Report. Um, he was playing some games, and he was, like, having questions about some stuff. And it was, like, timing of things and such. So, I mean, it was, it was actually pretty good. There wasn't anything bad or anything wrong no, no, about I it. Mean, but, no, yes. Yeah, that's something to do. People equate trying to break the game as bad. No. No. If you try to break it, you find out what's wrong, and it can be fixed. Correct. As long as you report it. Yes. That's the thing. You need to report it. One of the things that um, people were, whenever they were brought out the beta test rules and people could look at it, is doing the Iron Star Alliance and doing double shields on that guy um, is going to be really hard to get through his armor. And I'm like, okay, don't have that's, a problem with that. That's, that's what it's supposed design to do. feature. Yeah, that's that's supposed. You're supposed to not be able to. He gave up a weapon to do that. Yeah, he gave up a weapon to be tougher, um, which yeah. people don't understand. I was like, he gave up, you know. Well, usually, usually when you have something big like that, you're giving up something else. Yeah. Or you cost way more points or something. So, there was 
there was just that stuff. I mean, there there are a couple of like timing issues because it has a because it's an I go you go game. I activate a unit and a solo. Then you activate a unit and a solo. And if I have nothing else to activate, then I start over. But if I have other things to activate, I keep on activating those. So a full jack army, not going to work really well. Uh, because you only get one jack that you can move or do stuff with. Um, but you're also going to want a weaver and all the other stuff because you want to use your cards and the spell casting and all that everything. Um, they've already got a complete set of scenarios in there for people to deal with. Um, people are waiting for a play test document, um, for like tournament play or whatever, or to just kind of define some things like how big objectives are or whatever. I haven't had a chance to look at it too much, but I know that somebody said that, um, didn't know if the objectives were supposed to be a certain basis or whatever. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to dig into it a little bit that more. That would be a helpful thing to know. Yep. Which I'm, pretty, I, I'm not positive on that. I'll just have to wait and see. Um, there's been a lot of good reviews. I haven't seen. I haven't seen anybody glaring negative. There has been a few packing issues, but nothing bad. Like I lo I don't have a backpack for one of my guys, and of course. You know, PP has the website where you go and you can fill it out and you can get your, you know, backpack replacement part. Um, and they're at least still doing that, which is good because some places are not doing replacement parts anymore. Um, what else? Uh, I'm liking it because it's a very terrain heavy game. Uh, and terrain means a lot. Um, not only for cover, but they the line of sights. Uh, they use volume for line of sight, too, so um, hiding, and you can't hide behind troops, or you can't hide behind things. Uh, the game is mostly ranged, but the things that are melee can be stupid deadly in melee. Um, and the ability to never lose your models, as in you destroy, so if you go, and this is the Marcher's World, uh, Jack, and you destroy this model, uh, it goes off the board. I can bring it back in. Uh, if I pay the correct amount of points to bring it back in the game. Um, mm -hmm. Which I think is really good. The only thing that can't be brought back are named characters. Once they're dead, they're dead, so you can't bring them back. Uh, and there's like four named characters. I think they have a fifth one coming out uh, that they spoiled. But I mean, everything looked really solid. Models are solid. They've got a good good luck to them good pose uh you can kind of uh pose them a little bit not a lot um the war jacks at least um I'm, I'm i'm excited about it i'm gonna try to get them all cleaned up uh, i'm gonna start soaking them tonight just get a big old tub that i have and put them in there and start soaking them and everything and let them soak overnight and then in the morning i'll scrub them all off and everything and get started building them because I want to play as soon as possible. I mean, I can go play with Mizzy. I got a friend of mine, local, Nick, that he doesn't know when he's going to get his. But he says, I'll proxy and stuff to We can test the rules out and figure out everything. Uh, because we got a lot of locals that are interested in it. But, of course, with everything that's going on right now, they're like, do I want to invest the money? I feel real bad because this is the worst possible time to bring out a role-playing game a board game, yep. a miniatures game, any in-person sort of game. Correct. Video game. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Get out now. Yeah. yeah. I know old type of game, not so much. Yeah. But, I mean, they, and the thing is, they stuck to their Kickstart date and oh, their they, release date, which is really yeah. good. Um, props for them on that because, you know, with everything going on, you know, they couldn't have people in the warehouse doing stuff. That's the reason why they kind of like, okay, some things are not going to make it into wave one. But we're going to give you enough for wave one type stuff. Uh, I think there was there wasn't much, um, but the third faction that's coming out wasn't slated to come out until like August. But everybody's getting it like the end of this month, so it's next week. Wow. So it's like a little bit early, not a lot, but it, it, enough. And now it's time for the media section. Oh, we already actually okay. Hold on, uh, no, no, I got to move stuff because I have boxes all over the place. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, I forgot it earlier. I do need to uh, pour a little out for another homie. 
the Transformers trading card game. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's do that in the media section. So, media section. Let's put that over. Um, yeah, so Ari, fuck you to Watsy for canceling Transformers TCG. <laughs> Cheers. What what was did they give her? I saw the little post someone posted because uh, I think uh, Lee posted it uh, yeah. on Facebook. Hey, Weave two came early because they knew they were going to cancel it and wanted to sell it. Oh no no she's talking about um, five. No, L- Mizzy's talking about Wave two is a oh, uh, yeah. warcaster. Um, so what was the reason behind canceling the card game? Well, the official, what was the official wording here? Let me see if I can find it real quick. Beanie on um, is saying, Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro? Uh, Wizards of the Coast. They're owned by Hasbro, but they're a semi-autonomous business unit. So it says, uh, our product offerings didn't meet the expectations of the broader fan base to engage further with the brand. Additionally, yeah. the current global situation posed by COVID-19 pandemic has been additional hurdles. As such, the Titan Master attack released on May 29th is the game's final release. Uh, so basically, what is popular as they wanted and COVID nineteen. Yes. Yep. There you go. Not surprised at all. No, that's a little disappointing, but it is what it is. I mean, luckily none of my crew has spent a ton of money on the most recent set. We've got the at least champions you can still play online, <laughs> and their 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 cards are still you know while they're no longer physical cards for yep. the incoming waves, they are. Digital. Hey, Kathy, you got a lot of. I have a lot of. Oh, is that noise coming from her? I think that is. I don't know. Is there a lot of something coming from me? We're about to beat your mic for a second. I don't know. Yeah, it's Kathy. I yeah. do have a fan that's kind of blown. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fan. I was like, what is that? Oh, you know what? I forgot to. Uh, in Skype because I was just rushed. I forgot to because it keeps defaulting to uh, the wrong. Uh, the oh, wrong you're the wrong microphone. microphone. Yeah. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Transformers CCG is done. Uh, we got cards. I might try and find some of the latest set, cheap. I might not. Depends. I mean, is what it is. Ain't the first time a card game I've loved has uh, disappeared. Gone away. Probably won't be the last. I got one more I'm going to watch on Kickstarter that's supposed to be like a reimagining of the old Battletech TCG that Watsy put out in the early 2000s, late 90s. So we'll see. We'll see how the Kickstarter is. If it's cheap enough, I might get into it. If not, I won't. We'll see. Yeah, I like to look at that. Um, so, the media section, I do have some things to talk about that are. Not movies that I watch, but Comic Con did release a bunch of things. Um, I don't, watch, don't spoil nothing. I come through the internet. No, 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 no nothing spoiled. Uh, just uh, I've already posted it on most of the places, and you've seen it on my Facebook, most likely. Um, they did release a new trailer for New Mutants, um, and I, see, I already see John's eyes rolling. Um, it is better than what they have been showing, but it is not New Mutants. Exactly, it's not New Mutants. So let me. Someone on your Facebook actually said, what if this doesn't look like the Demon Bear uh, uh, arc? Well, that's a good point. It does maybe kind of look like the Demon Bear arc. The Demon Bear arc was a shit arc that doesn't fit the context of the comic book at all and was a poor choice and honestly almost got that comic book fucking canceled. Yeah. Um, so it, it does. It it's, it's Fox just trying to, we've got our comedy X-Men, let's make our horror X-Men. Yeah. Fucking, and I like New Mutants. It has some of my favorite... Do something good with it. I mean, that has one of my favorite characters, uh, Magic. Little Alien or Sweeten or whatever. She's one of my favorite uh, uh, New Mutants characters. I've got one of her toys hanging up on my wall back there. Uh, and I like it. She's one of my favorite. Um, but this definitely... It looks better. I'm just not 100% sold on it. Let me, let me ask you a logical question, though, Gonzo. Why would you make take the mutants and make it horror rather than making it your YA X Men? Yeah, I, I don't know why they went this route. So I'm gonna wait and see it. This comes out next month. Um, if I'm if I'm allowed to go see it. So not seeing. <laughs> um, 
and everything. I'm going to wait for all of the reviews. Everyone is going to have to tell me that's a great movie, and I'm stupid for not seeing it before I see it. And I still probably won't like it. Yeah. Um, another, some amazing news. Uh, the new season, or actually the start of a new season, uh, Wizards, which is part of the um, Tales of Arcadia uh, series on Netflix, comes out, which I've been waiting for. I mean, heck, it's been a year since that series, that, that things come out, because it's the last set of the Tales of Arcadia. Um, is it a year, or does it just feel like it's been a year? No, it's been a year. It has been a year, uh, I believe, from the end of it. It's been close to a year, because I believe it was not last year, but the year before, my kids watched all of that, and we were waiting on Wizards. I believe it's been a year, or close to it. So three below was the last one. Yeah, three below was the last one. Um, season two and uh, released July twelfth, twenty nineteen. So it's been just barely a year for the release of it. Yeah, it's about pretty standard, honestly speaking. Yeah. So Wizards is the last installment. Um, it's from the Tales of Arcadia line, done by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, it starts off with Troll Hunters. It goes from Troll Hunters to Three Below, and then to Wizards. Um, I really love this series. The series is a lot of fun. It's really good. It's got a lot of good story behind it. A lot of good characters. Uh, yeah, 2020 has felt like two years. Um, and this is the ending of the Tales of Arcadia. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's, it's super solid. At first I thought it was going to be like a really bad kids, kitty kid type cartoon. But it's really good. Not with Guillermo del Toro involved. But he is quality. He, yeah. He's actually really good at making things, I don't know, let's say proper. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was a book series to begin with. I, I may read the book because they said the book is a, a lot more darker than the TV show. But, yeah, uh, the TV show is obviously made with kids in mind, it yeah. looks like. So. But it, it, it's good, solid. And you got plenty of things. I think it comes out August 7th. So I'll binge watch that, of course. Um, also, another TV series that got a, which I thought was interesting, is they did a Comic Con panel for the um, uh, crap. Now I can't remember. Shoot, I'm I'm so scatterbrained right now. Um, what was it? Um, another er, Dragon Prince. Um, Dragon Prince. Uh, they were doing the Comic Con panel for Dragon Prince, talking about the last few seasons and such. And it had all the main characters and the producers and the director and all them on there. And uh, I was watching it and one of the characters was like, so are we going to get another season? And the director was like, no, we're not going to get another season. We're getting the entire story. So they greenlit them for the entire story of Dragon Prince, which I think is four more seasons, uh, which is actually a, a bold thing to do to, you know, get thing but that means we're getting the entire story we're well, getting just, they'll make it all at once so it's one fee it's less startup and takedown fee uh money than yeah to do it all at once so they're going to sort of get a bargain out of that yeah which i thought was interesting because actually they told them on air they told all the actors on air they all no, nobody knew until he told them and like a couple of them were crying and you know everybody was all freaking out and dancing and such and like a couple of the girls were, they were actually crying because I mean, they actually get to tell the entire story, which is great. Um, that means we're going to get an actual ending, uh, which is good to me. I think that's that's wonderful. Uh, I like Dragon Prince. Dragon Prince is amazingly good fun. Uh, first season was animation was a bit off, but they definitely picked it up and made it better. Um, really, really like it. I'm glad that we're going to get the entire series. I feel like, as a note, every series should get a chance to have an ending. Yeah. Whether it be just a quick, like, hey, you got to speed things up, or a movie. Like, I feel like I would write that. If I ever write a TV series, I'm going to write that in there. Like, you got to give me at least a two hour movie to end everything if you cancel me or, like, yeah. just yeah. Be able to tie up some things. Because even, uh, what was it, uh, Birds of Prey, the old. Uh, uh, sort of pre CW DC show got a like two hour TV mm -hmm. movie to end everything. Um, 
Russ also said uh, they greenlit season three of The Boys. Season two hasn't even come out yet, and they already gave them season three, which I'm, I'm happy about. Well, Amazon's going to keep up because Netflix is taking it back a little bit. So Amazon's got those two neck and neck. I think we know who's going to win the, uh, like, I think Hulu's going to be odd man out. <laughs> Season three of Norseman is out, too, on Netflix, which is the show that uh, I was talking about a few weeks ago. The Norwegian show about Vikings. Yeah. Only, a... only it's the Norwegian actors doing it. They, they recorded every single scene in both Norwegian and in English. And uh, Which is awesome. I want to find the Norwegian with English subtitles and watch that because I've already watched the English version. I'm just curious to see whether there's any kind of difference, you know, Yeah. because they are acting it out two different times. So there could be a little difference. Be interesting. Um, I did. I do have that on my queue uh, to try to see and, and watch it because I just saw so that season. Funny. It is so funny. I'll have to, I'm gonna, that's another one I'm probably binge watch while I'm putting together, putting together models. Um, also, they're doing a Dragon Prince RPG, uh, which I'm going to look at, uh, whether I buy it or not. It's a whole different story, but I hopefully it's good. Uh, it's got a really good history and story. And companies don't. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to read it. I just saw it. Um, let because me see. I, I may not remember, but back in the day, they did so many anime properties. Got role playing games. It was all the same company, just bolt on to their existing system. And it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can do a quick one. Do, 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 do. Ah. Thank you, Forbes. Did you get? Find out it's not a big deal. Yeah. Just curious. I did not watch Into the Spider Verse this week. I, I will have to watch well, it. You have another week. week. Yeah. You have one more week. One more week. <laughs> um, well, Gonzo was talking about Gamma Tutorial earlier. I, in preparedness to try and make something thematic for Gunpla episode, watched a Gamera de Toro movie. Can anyone guess what it is? Uh, no. Pacific Rim. <laughs> Why? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, now, if you don't know... Yes, Pena, we we're stopping. We're canceling the apocalypse. <laughs> if you don't know Pacific Rim... Grim, you should go see it because it is giant robots versus giant monsters and it is awesome. It is just shy of a perfect movie, as in I can only see a couple things I was like, what was that? But the whole idea is there is this breach through dimensions and uh, kaiju, as they call the giant monsters, come out and in order to defeat the kaiju, because our conventional weapons weren't working, we made giant robots, the Jaegers. And it's sort of that whole story of, you know, what's going on there. And it's fucking awesome. Um, they have great names for all of the Jaegers. They make up great names. They really lean into it. If you haven't seen it. Uh, they lean into the whole thing. All the Kaijus get cool names. All the Jaegers get great names. Um, it is like a Japanese anime in, quote unquote, live action, all the actors live action, but obviously all the stuff is, uh, you know, computer animated, but so super cool. It's just fun. And for an action movie that only has really three real set action pieces, it flows really well. They make good world building within based on what happened. They have a lot of cool characters. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a scene, and if you saw this in a preview, it's basically Gypsy Danger, who is the hero mech, uh, has just gotten done with the first of the, uh, or checking the pulse, which is him, them emptying the other clip of the other plasma blaster into the maybe dead, dead, uh, uh, kaiju, uh, and going to fight the other one, dragging a cargo ship that they then pull up and use like a samurai sword, and I'm like, if you saw the preview and you didn't fucking love this movie, I, I don't know. We're not, I mean, we're not in the same agreement as far as the movies. Cause that was, I have never seen it. Oh, my God. Kathy, it is an experience. If you love the Godzilla movies, this is like the other side, where it's like all bad Godzillas, but we built giant robots because fuck those guys. It's super fun. All Everyone does a great job. I mean, 
fucking Idris Elba is just... He says every line, and I'm not sure if it's great dialogue, but he says it with such force and conviction, you're like, hell yeah, Idris Elba, I'm with you. Uh, Russ says, number one was a great mix of humor, action, and story. I totally agree. The sequel wasn't as good, but still a fun watch. <laughs> I also agree. Um, I, I could have thought some good ways to make the sequel better, but that's uh, better for when we see the sequel. But it's great fun. Uh, I mean, obviously, I know on Blu-ray, it's well worth the Blu-ray or the rental. It's so much fun and enjoyment in it. It's just great world building. Um, hey, shocker, I'm going to give this zero space herpes because they plasma blast through those fuckers and then cut them in half with the sword. And then nuke them. <laughs> Spoiler for the movie. They cut them in half with a sword, but it wasn't a rapier. It was not a rapier. <laughs> Checking. Super fun movie. Uh, just make sure you're watching Pacific Rim, not Atlantic Rim. Atlantic Rim is something else entirely in the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> you could only barely get further apart. Um, just let you know... Pacific Rim and Atlantic Rim is cats. <laughs> Uh, the Dragon Prince RPG is going to be using the Cortex system. Okay, that's a, that's a fairly well-regarded system. Yeah, they did the Serenity, Battlestar Galactica, Supernatural, Demon Hunters, RPGs. Uh, I actually own the Cortex system and uh, didn't even know that they were doing it in that system, so I'll have to take a look at it. Um, so... Kathy. What? Did you watch anything this week? Um... Besides not Spider-Verse. Oh, you know what? I watched a couple episodes of a, believe it or not, a film retrospective show on YouTube, and I felt like John. I, I thought you were going to say you watched a couple episodes of Ripley's Believe It or Not, and I'd be like, oh, cool, Jack Palance. Yeah, that would have been cool, too, because I loved that show. But <laughs> this was uh, this was Oliver Harper doing okay. movie retrospectives, and I watched the one for, for Your Eyes Only. I, I have seen some Oliver Harper's movie retrospectives. And they're very interesting. They're fun. It, it, they were fun. And then I watched one for a film called Deep Rising, which I had never heard of before, and now I want to watch it. I'm trying to think of which one Deep Rising 1998. is. 1998. I got it uh, Star 6. I know it's not Deep Star 6. And and it's about this this cruise ship and uh, a monster. Oh, well, Deep Rising. Okay. Tentacle. I, Tentacle. So they yeah. did sort of this for my uh, pod, the podcast. I listen to um, Junk Food Cinema. That is a good listen as well, because you know the ending of the movie. If you remember the ending of the movie. Well, I never saw the movie. Now I have to go watch it. I well, mean, hit they, me they, up after you see the movie because the ending, like what they were intending to do from the ending, is this guy mystic. already covered it. So okay. did, I I thought. Is that not a great? I don't want to spoil it for anyone because that's something to discover on your own is great. What like, they I thought it was intended, great. I thought, oh my god, if only, if it only. It would be so awesome. <laughs> but somehow Treat Williams doesn't pull people into the box oh, office. I love Treat Williams. I don't think it was him. I think it was the fact that, and they mentioned it, uh, nobody else was making monster movies at the time, but they <laughs> were behind on their schedule. So. Monster movies, actually, other people were making monster movies at the same time that hadn't come out yet, and they were released before this one ended up being released, and it kind of just dis yeah. distracted kind of people. That was like, uh, and it's funny because I saw all the movies that he mentioned, all the other movies that he mentioned, uh, and not this one, which I had never heard of. <laughs> so, yeah, much like that, if, if that sort of... Uh you know, retrospective movie or movie uh, review, if you will, uh, sounds good to you guys, and you don't want to do it on YouTube, check out Junk Food Cinema. I listen to them, listen to them since their first episode. They cover what they call junk food movies, stuff like Deep Rising, Battle Beyond the Stars, Battle Truck, you know, all of those kind of movies that are not big hits, but they're good junk food, just great to watch. Uh, they've turned me on to quite a few movies, and I've enjoyed just about every one they've said I had to watch. <laughs> I mean, you have just, to watch it. I mean, they're the one the reason I watched Josie and the Pussycats, and I was like, holy crap, that movie's actually enjoyable as fuck. <laughs> they're called Junk Food Cinema. 
Don't put cinema. And uh, I have to one write of the, these things down, otherwise they forget. One of the hosts, uh, Cargill, is one of the writers from Doctor Strange. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Gonzo, I think we want to let you talk again. <laughs> um, I watched The Old Guard. Oh, yeah. Um, you had mentioned it and stuff and everything. Uh, you didn't give it bad ratings, but you didn't give it like glowing reviews. I, I want to point out, apparently the rest of the world disagrees with me and it is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> so I watched it, uh, open-minded. I was like, uh, John didn't give this great reviews, but he didn't say it was, you know, four or five space herpes. No, I think I gave yeah. it two. Yeah. Um, it so like I, li I liked it. It was a good movie. Um, there are some plot holes. There are some stuff that are just like, you're going to see this and this is what's going to happen. Um, there are some good funny scenes. Yeah. Um, there are some good good action scenes. Um, I do love, one of my favorite scenes is when the two guys get kidnapped in the van. That's yeah. the best scene in the movie, hands down. Like, yes. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it just just the the speech he gave, and then the end of it? I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Um, not gonna spoil it for people. It's actually really really good. Um, it, it, I think the only downside for me was that well, the action was solid. It wasn't until the ending scene, which is great. The ending yeah. one has the best action scene. I would have liked to see more in that style with them all working together like they do. Correct. It was very cool the way they just worked it together well. The rest were solid, but not spectacular action scenes. No, they, they, it, was, it was good. All around it was good. There wasn't any major glaring issues with no, this. No, I would absolutely no. recommend people watch it. Yeah. I mean... I had a good time. Um, takes a, should, should probably take a uh, space for you off of that. So, I mean, it's... It's... it's worth watching it for. Yeah. It's great. It's that yeah. good. Yeah. Um, Charlie Theron in this is really good. I like her as an action star. Um... I can't wait to see this. There is a petition and rumors that they're going to do a two. So it's the number one movie in Netflix. Yeah. Well, they're going to get another one. Yeah. Don't you and, and or, it, or whatever. And it leaves it wide open for it. Um, there was some, there was some scenes you were like, what? Okay. But I mean, it wasn't bad. Um, the good fight scenes and they weren't like over the top crazy fight scenes. Like, flying and everything but it was definitely good combat yeah it, it was good combat it just was cut a little more than i, I mean you can blame john wick and yeah. uh Fury Road for just such amazingly made fight scenes that if you start to get towards the realistic if you're not there you always seem just a little down yeah uh Benio makes a comment that it would be a really good series and not a movie. I could see that. I could yeah. see being made into a series. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I mean, definitely I can see a, a season or episode two. Um, same cast, same group of people, same everything. No, don't, don't change anything. Just leave it like it is. Um, yeah. Type thing. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, like a half to maybe one space herpes, but it was not, it was good. It was a good, solid, entertaining, had some good comedy had some good feels. About the one scene again, I, I will, whatever my original rating was, I will give it one space herpy, you know, come down to one space herpy because of the one scene. Should definitely take it up a notch. Yeah, because that, that scene right there, you're watching it and you're like, yeah, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> like, everyone should fucking see that scene. It was great. Yeah, it was a really good, uh, really good scene. It really, really kind of puts everything in, in perspective, like today. Um, but I mean, I really enjoyed it. I uh, highly recommend it. Um, not any bad thing to really say about it. No. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little issues, but nothing. It's, it's not a perfect movie, but it is definitely a good quality, solid movie. And it does have a, you can, you, when you watch it, you'll be like, oh, they were kind of inspired by this, but we're not going to tell you what that is. Yeah. There was a lot of cool things in it. Um, yeah. I hope they bring back the entire cast and at the end. They do, or when they do the next one, they include the entire cast uh, from not only the guard, but the other guy, you know, just the, everybody in yeah, that. Everyone they get, I mean, I understand if Charlie's there and just shows, if they make it a series, it shows up once in a while because she's off 
doing other things or because she's expensive. I understand the reality of paying for a top tier actress like that. But I'd like to see her in it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're going to do a old guard too. Um, just keep the original cast, bring her back, make it kind of cool. Um, older, old guard too. Gold, older. Uh, the older guard. <laughs> I was doing like a die harder thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked it. I, I had a good time with it. It was, it was good and solid. Uh, recommend it. Don't, you know, don't pass it up. Go watch it. OG two. <laughs> Um, I did watch a couple of other things is catching up on some, uh, some series and everything. Did watch another episode of alone. Um, and, uh, was enjoying that. It's still pretty good. Um, this guy actually killed a caribou. I think is what it was. Um, he shot it with a bow and then it started to get weak and it still wasn't dying. So he stabbed it to death with a knife. And I was like, okay. Um, or, yeah, he. Yeah, he worked hard for that. Um, but I mean, watch that. That was uh, that's been pretty good. Uh, they're turning him into. They're turning the episodes into like an hour and a half to two hour. Because they do like an hour and a half, and then the last thirty minutes is behind the scenes and talking with the cast, the people that were on the show. Um, so it's already done and completed. So we don't know who wins, but um, people are starting to get fatigued and, you know, lose fat and everything. So we're starting to start seeing people dropping out. There are, I think there are seven people right now out of the 10 are still in. So, but it's winter's coming along. So that's always the time that fucks everybody. So uh, I still like it. It's still fun. Um, still watching Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, it's almost over. This was a Groundhog Day episode, uh, which was actually pretty damn funny because, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, oh God, the the guy that was in all the Marvel movies, uh, uh, Coulson, Coulson, yeah, Coulson is uh, the only one that remembers, and so he gives everybody a bunch of shit. And he's like, "Yeah, we've done this thirty seven times. Get your shit together and stuff." And so it just kind of plays out. And Coulson's really good in this. Does it remind you of that episode of Discovery? Uh, I don't remember that. You don't remember that episode? Mm -mm. Wow. There's an episode like that of Discovery. This one is more, I mean, Marvel Agent Shields, I, I, it's been a while, but yeah. Um, this one, it, it's a Groundhog episode, but Coulson is the only one that remembers. How do I not remember? <laughs> Thank because. You. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just because it's been a while. Um, but I, it, Still liking Marvel Agents Shields. I'm ready for the end of it so we can see the end and I can just be, yay, it's done. Uh, eventually I'll have to watch all of it because yeah. I rewatched the first season a while ago, remember, and I'm, other than that, I've only seen like maybe season three ish, yeah. maybe two. I forget. It all blurs together. The giant thing of things I haven't watched. Yeah. But I am almost done with uh, Clone Wars season three, so I get to take a little break and maybe watch. Hey. I think I should definitely watch the Expanse season, whatever the most recent one is, between, because I need to watch that. Clean your brain out some. <sighs> um, to sound <laughs> not harsh, watch some actually good sci fi. Some good sci fi. That would be nice. Guys, um, it is coming to the end of the show. We really appreciate y'all being here. We're sorry we didn't get to do a Gunplay episode. We'll find out what's going on uh, and wow. we'll rebook it, hopefully. Yeah. Um, we'll do another episode. We'll get back in. Uh, we'll find out what happened. Nestor, hopefully he's okay. Um, other than that, uh, if, uh, if we can, we'll reschedule it for next week. If not, we'll just do something different and I'll put together Necrons. Uh, if I don't have them all done, which I think I might, cause that'll be my first thing I put together. Probably. Uh, there's a lot of cool shows on TV. Go watch them. A lot of things just came out on Netflix. Uh, a lot of new seasons, uh, to binge and then a lot of seasons coming up. Um, be careful out there guys take care of each other look out be nice for more than dice i'm gonzo i'm baneon <laughs> i'm still kathy <laughs> good night people <laughs> good night. i didn't even get to talk i didn't even get to talk about the thing that i rewatched, and i rewatched starship troopers i'm gonna have to redo that Wow.
I'll, I'll give her another review of that.